Amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Gathered in this Eucharist, we pray as a community, we pray as a family, as a church, beyond space and in time, with the Lord. journeying with us in this time of Christ. And so we offer our intentions and we pray to the Lord that we may strengthen and continue to trust in His love. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and we ask the Lord for compassion and forgiveness. Lord, for the many times that we fail to love, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, for the many times we fail to forgive, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, for the many times we fail to trust and believe in you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lighten, O God, of the heart of the children. Grant those you share. Amen. First reading is taken from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments, otherwise you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God that can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar. There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white hat furnace and from your hands, O King, may he save us. But even if he will not, 
Know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue which you set up. Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hat furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men unfettered and unhurt walking in the fire, and the fort looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants that trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let our response be glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you, believe, if you live according to my teaching, you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We are descendants of Abraham, was their answer. Never have we been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be free? Jesus answered them, I give you my assurance Everyone who lives in sin is the slave of sin. No slave has a permanent place in the family, but the son has a place there forever. That is why if the son frees you, you will really be free. I realize you are at Abraham's stock. Nonetheless, you are trying to kill me because my word finds no hearing among you. I tell what I have seen in the Father's presence. You do what you have heard from your father. They retorted, Our father is Abraham. Jesus told them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be following Abraham's example. The fact is, you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I have heard from God. Abraham did nothing like that. Indeed, you are doing your father's works. They cried, We are no illegitimate breed. We have but one father, and that is God himself. 
Jesus answered, Were God your father, you would love me. For I come forth from God, and am here. I did not come of my own will, it, has, it was he who sent me. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we come nearer to Holy Week, the conflict between Jesus and the Jews continues. But Jesus insists, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yet to these words, the Jews become belligerent and protest. We were never enslaved to anyone. We are descendants of Abraham. But Jesus stood his ground. You are slaves of sin. And what were their sinfulness? Because of their attitude of being sons and daughters of Abraham, their first sin is insensitivity. More and more, Jesus uncovers the apathy of the Jews. They do not care of those who fall through the cracks. All they were concerned about were their own kin. Who cares about others as long as myself and my family is okay? Who are the poor, the sick, the unawim? They just don't care. But Jesus cared for them. Their second sinfulness is self-entitlement. The Jewish people were a proud race. We are the sons of Abraham. We are entitled to that honor, to the privileges, to whatever we want. We can condemn you and we have power over you because I is the most powerful. I am entitled self-entitlement finally the third sinfulness of the jewish people were limitlessness they thought they were unlimited parang cell phone na only no they saw that their power is beyond limits they control everything because they thought that they had a god on their side but in fact it's not a God on their side. It's a God on their call. And so they thought they are limitless. This is what Jesus points to them as the source of their enslavement. That is why they could not see the truth. True liberation from sin is to accept who they are and accept who Jesus is. If there is one grace that the coronavirus pandemic unveils for us, it is these same sins of the modern men and women that infects us. Insensitivity. We thought we never need anyone, so we just don't care about others. As countries wallow in economic growth, more and more people are marginalized. Refugees have nowhere to go, and all we do is shrug our shoulders in apathy. Self-entitlement is the disposition that I deserve all I wanted and more because I am more important than you. We think we are unlimited. Our own limitlessness means that I can continue to do what I want and desire whatever, whenever, wherever, at the expense of others, and sometimes even at the expense of oneself, when we do not know how to take care of our very selves, 
and just pursue our ambitions, our want. Much more, we neglect ourselves. We don't care for ourselves in pursuit of unlimited wants and desires. These are what the virus attacks. Insensitivity, entitlement, and limited lessness. We realize we are mere humans. All of us, we are one creation. We cannot be self-entitled because we live in one earth. This virus makes us recognize our unfreedom, our slavery from sin. And so Jesus invites us to reflect we need Jesus. We need each one. Last night, I posted on my FB account, and I quote, Perhaps this lockdown makes us experience firsthand how it was for Ignatius being locked inside the walls of Loyola after having been hit by the cannonball. But after the lockdown, his life was never the same again. We know that after this experience, we can never be the same again. That is freedom. Freedom is change. So perhaps the virus is an opportunity for an Ignatian experience. Remember the three kings who went and saw Jesus, but after experiencing Christ, they changed their path. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, in this time of Lent, may we realize our need for change. For we can never remain insensitive we can never remain self-entitled. We can never remain limitless because the Lord truly gives us the freedom that we need to be able to live as sons and daughters of a compassionate Father. Amen. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us now gather our prayers. God, who is limitless source of truth, freedom, and power, we are limited in mind and spirit and in body. So, therefore, we ask God to bring us and all persons to the fulfillment He intends for us. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. that all who seek the truth may have their minds opened and freed by the message of Jesus and his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our devout practices this Lenten season may serve to free us from bondage to excessive self-concern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our involvement in the materialism of our day may not deter us in our quest for everlasting life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, the poor, the prisoners, the ignorant, and all those who suffer may find freedom from their life's burdens, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may unbind the faithful departed and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We include in our prayers all the intentions you have sent to our Facebook pages, Jescom and Radio Katipunan, for all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a special way, we pray for our friends, relatives who have recently passed away, including Mr. Benitan, a longtime friend of the Jesuits in the Philippines. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
In a few moments of silence, we remember those for whom we have promised prayers, especially those who are sick. In a special way, I pray for Miriel and the Morelos family as requested, and those who are suffering at this very moment, and those who are taking good care of them. Loving Father, we present to you our needs. We are confident you will grant them, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters, my brothers, that this, our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and the good of all his holy church. Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, Holy o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the twofold, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. For humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Pope Francis, our Bishop Onesto, and the College of Bishops, and all men and women who serve in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Especially we commend to you our brothers and sisters who have died because of this pandemic. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. We are brothers and sisters in one Father, and so our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to call God our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day, that in your mercy we may be free from sin and from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ. Lamb, Lamb of, of God, God, you take, take away the, the sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers, my sisters, this is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the love of God. How blessed are we who are called to receive Him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oracio Imperata against COVID-19. God, our, our Father, Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray, pray for us. St. Raphael the Archangel, pray, pray for us. St. Rock, pray, pray for us. St. Lorenzo Ruiz, pray, pray for us. St. Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people. And as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and your our loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is celebrated. We go in peace, trusting in the God of compassion. Thanks be to God.
Habang buhay, pinapangako ko Matibay na pag-ibig na para lang sa'yo Lumipas man ang sandaang taon Pangakong pagsinta pa rin sa puso mo'y ibubulong Matibay na pag-ibig Hindi matitiklong 